Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and from the outside, wine often seems complicated or even intimidating. So I want to share with you how to avoid the following 10 mistakes in order to enjoy wine like a master. Well, that sounded a bit corny, but you know what I mean, so let's go. Wine mistake number one, drinking white wines too cold and red wines too warm. I've been talking about this issue for ages, but no one seems to be listening. White wines are usually stored in the fridge, while red wines are stored somewhere in an apartment. White wines are therefore often poured at six degrees Celsius, which is way too cold, and red wines are often poured at 20, 25, 30 degrees Celsius, depending on the weather, which is way too warm. What I would recommend is take your white wine out of the fridge like 30 minutes before you want to serve it. While you should actually put your red wine into the fridge half an hour to an hour before you want to pop the cork. I actually often drink my whites and my reds at the same temperature because they are all stored down here in the cellar. So they are at around 16 degrees Celsius when I take them out. I would recommend serving most red wines at 17 degrees Celsius, while you should serve most white wines at 10 degrees Celsius. Really good wines should be served not cold or hot, but at a cool temperature, because that's how they can express themselves. Really cold wines don't smell like much, and really warm wines often just smell like alcohol. Wine mistake number two, pouring too much wine into your glass. I always wanted to try this, but you can see you can almost fit an entire bottle into one of those bigger glasses. But the problem with that is that you don't leave enough space on top of the wine in order to really allow it to show its full aromatic potential. This still smells good though. So you should always make sure that there's enough wine in the glass so that you have something to drink, but not too much of it. So this is pretty much the maximum of wine that you should have in your glass. More would be excessive. And you can always pour in more once you drink some. Here's a bonus mistake that you shouldn't make when learning about wine. Not subscribing to my channel. Please do subscribe. Mistake number three is believing that you need expensive equipment. In order to get you started in wine, you don't really need a lot of expensive stuff. I might have a lot of pricey toys today, but when I first started practicing for the Master of Wine, I often tasted from IKEA glasses, and I still sometimes use those freebie corkscrews that you get from wine producers or wine producing regions. Of course, you might get a little bit more flavor from a fancy glass, or you look cooler when you use one of those expensive corkscrews, but it's better to invest that money into wine in order to broaden your palate. You can also get creative in order to save money. Who needs an expensive decanter when an old jam jar basically does the same job and this comes at a much, much lower price, so just try it. Mistake number four, judging a wine by the first sip. Tasting wine is like getting to know a new person. Sometimes your new best friend needs a little bit of time to get out of his shell. And it's the same with some more delicate wines. They just need time to fully express themselves. On the other hand, there are also wines that seem really impressive on the first sip, but get boring after one or two glasses. So take your time and don't dismiss or celebrate a wine before the bottle is empty. Mistake number five, not judging a wine by its cover. Yes, you heard me right. It's a mistake not to judge a wine by its cover. Of course, when drinking wine, it's all about the content of the bottle, but when you're buying wine and you don't get to taste it, it's also really important that you check out the label. The label tells you a lot about the origin, the grape variety, the alcohol content, and sometimes even on the rating of a wine, but it also gives you lots of information on the intent of the producer. This producer, for example, looks very classic, classical, they don't care about modernizing, they already have their customer base locked in, so they don't have to make the label easier to understand. While this producer, on the other hand, has spent quite a lot of time and probably also money on designing that label in a way that it's easy to understand, that it works on a shelf, and also so that consumers remember the name, the brand of that wine. Mistake number six, 
taking food pairings too seriously. When matching wine and food, there are only a few mistakes that you can really make. You should not eat something really sweet with a less sweet or dry wine, and you shouldn't eat something really spicy with a very alcoholic wine. But that's about it. Of course, if you want, you can go really deep into food and wine matching. But for me, most of the times, it's really just important that I drink really good food and really good wine. Did I just say drink really good food? Well, you know what I mean. On top of that, that's how you find new great matches. Do you think anybody ever sat down at a desk for hours thinking about possible combinations for blue cheese and then came up with port? No. Somebody sat at a table, had a bottle of port open and had some blue cheese there and then realized, wow, that really works. Mistake number seven, to just drink what you like. I know this is a bit controversial because lots of wine people now tell you to just follow your palate. And of course you should find out what you like, but in order to do that, you should listen to friends, sommeliers, wine experts, pretentious wine snobs, and of course, taste around. You cannot really know what you like without having tasted many wines before. And most wine experts get to taste way more wines than you. Therefore, the independent advice of a knowledgeable taster is valuable in order to get you to find better wines faster. Of course, you shouldn't religiously follow anybody's advice and believe that a wine is good just because taster X gave it a big score. Mistake number eight, being intimidated by the big labels. You should have respect for wine and especially wines with a long history should get some respect from you. However, just because a wine was great for centuries doesn't mean that it's still good. I remember many instances where I tasted a famous wine and was disappointed, especially when considering the price of that product. On top of that, maybe you just don't like this style. Somebody might give you a great Fino Sherry, but if you cannot stand the smell of it, you will not be able to appreciate it. Just to clarify, before I get into trouble with my comment section, I love sherry, but it's a bit of an acquired taste. Mistake number nine, not challenging common wisdom. Here on this channel, I challenge common wisdom everywhere I go. And there's a lot of it in the wine world. There are lots of things that are accepted, but not proven. So if you read something, you should try it out yourself in order to find out how your perception of a wine changes depending on serving temperature. And if you should or should not store wine underwater. For example, mistake number 10, thinking you can really understand wine without traveling. You can learn a lot about wine without ever leaving your hometown, but in order to really understand wine style or region, you have to go there. Wine is a cultural product and in order to understand culture, you have to live it. Plus, it gives you a great opportunity to visit some of the most beautiful places in the world for education purposes. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day obviously is which mistake did I miss? Comment down below, let me know. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay, what is it, uh, thirsty. <laughs>